Good afternoon. Uh, I hope everybody is fine. My name is Edward Sentongo, Pastor Edward Sentongo, and uh, you're welcome to our Bible study today. Uh, we are going to uh, learn a little bit more about um, the sacrifice that God uh, made through His Son, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, and what it means for us uh, today. A lot of times, as we said um, yesterday uh, in our Bible study, people speak about the this, the, 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 this crucifixion of Jesus Christ on the cross, but very rarely do they recognize, uh, and that's not everybody, but uh, a lot of uh, uh, churches out there, they do not recognize the power that comes with uh, Christ Jesus uh, dying on the cross. And so um, if you have a chance, uh, we preached yesterday on uh, the power that comes uh, from the uh, wisdom of the cross, uh, the, the, the wisdom of the cross that is foolishness to the world, uh, but most importantly, that Christ is risen, and that is where the power is. Uh, we don't stop at the cross, uh, but we recognize that because Jesus is alive, but we are also alive, praise God. And that's why his word is a living word. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is living. It is like a double-edged sword. It separates soul from spirit, bone from marrow, thoughts from intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit uh, to strengthen me today. I'm not feeling uh, well today, but I... I I just said I have to preach the gospel because somebody out there needs to be delivered. Praise God. The word of God declares, let the weak say I'm strong. So I'm strong in Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13. And, and, and he is the source of my power, the source of my strength. He is the bread of my life. Praise God. He said he's the bread of life. And whoever believes in him shall never hunger. Whoever whoever receives him shall never hunger. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Praise God. And he's the source of the rivers of living water. That's why we are called as a ministry, the Rivers of Living Water Ministries. It's a, it's a group, an organization, a Bible study group. It's not really a church. Uh, you can call it an online church because what is church? Church is sharing with one another. But it, we are not officially um, 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 registered as a church or as a ministry, so please don't call this a church or anything we are just an organization on Facebook of believers uh, who want to share the Word of God uh, with somebody out there so that we may be built up as a body of Christ and whoever has not accepted Jesus Christ uh, as their personal Lord and Savior has yet to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior praise God and so today we're going to talk about the Lord's uh, Supper you know that uh, on Thursday uh, uh, People are going to be celebrating the Lord's uh, uh, Supper. It say that's when he washed the feet of uh, his disciples, Jesus Christ. But what does it all mean? Is it just ceremonial? Do we just do it uh, um, for the sake of doing it? Uh, God, uh, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, yes, and he is God. I praise God. Because he said, when you see me, you see the Father. So when I speak of Jesus, I'm speaking of the Father, I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit of God. They are one. I praise God. Holy Spirit who points to the truth. And so I'm here to tell you that the significance of the Lord's Supper is, is not just for ceremonial purposes, for religious, traditional purposes. Uh, and I know that some people uh, do it every Sunday. And, and Jesus did not put any specific time frame within which to do it. So you can do it as often as you want. But most importantly, what does it signify? Is it just for the sake of eating a little bread and a little... Uh, 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 the wine or a cup of uh, uh, juice, grape juice to, to demonstrate that you've done it? No, it is for the unity of the, uh, 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 the, the body of Christ, unified by the Holy Spirit, not by denominationalism, not by uh, interdenominationalism, but by the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. In Christ, there is no denomination. In Christ, there is no uh, traditionalism. And, and that's why he fought so hard to break. Praise God. He fought so hard to break the, 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 the traditional religiosity of the Pharisees, of the scribes, of the, uh, the, 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 the traditional men in uh, royal regalia and, uh, and garbs that were in the synagogues uh, during his time. And so, so when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it is to be unified in the spirit. When we, we 
partake of the, the, the body of Christ, we remember the sacrifice that he made on the cross. When we partake of the, 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 the wine or the grape juice, whatever it is, uh, we remember the blood that was shed on the cross. And we overcome in spirit. And again, this is spirit because when we are born again, we become born again by water and spirit. So it's not a, just an, any other traditional ceremony. It is a spiritual thing. Praise God. And we're going to read scripture today about uh, that explanation and, and what Jesus explained about it and, and what other uh, uh, disciples and apostles like Paul talked about it uh, so that we may understand the purpose for which Jesus demonstrated the Last Supper. Praise God. Um, and I'm going to pray uh, before we start our Bible study. May God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Lord, I come before your mercy seat and ask for the forgiveness of my sins. I ask for the forgiveness of everyone on earth, Lord. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's so much going on, so much perversion, so much evil. My Lord, my God, we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you're a merciful God, a loving God, who's loving kindness and tender mercies and you forever. I come before your mercy seat and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Anything we've said or done or thought that has not glorified your name, Lord, I pray that you, you, you forgive each and every one of us. You say it in First John chapter 1, verse 7, Lord, that if we are willing to come to the marvelous light, meaning we have to repent of our sins, you will wash us from our, all our sins by your blood. The blood that was shed on the cross, Lord, that is the significance of that blood, Lord. It washes us clean. It purifies us that we are as white as snow. It cleanses us that we are as white as wool. My Lord, my God, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made because it was you, the Lamb of God, that was spotless, spotless, without wrinkle, that was sacrificed for that forgiveness. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made that we may all be forgiven. I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that protects us against the evil one, that, that purifies us, that, that continues to, to give us deliverance, supernatural deliverance. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. And everybody say Amen. And they overcame him by the blood of a lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives until death. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. I pray you take church. I'm but a vessel. Let your power prevail. You let your teaching prevail. You teach your children as you wish, Lord, even as they also learn in and through me. You work, Lord. Thank you. So where two or three are gathered in my name there, I will be in your midst. And I thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst. And so uh, we're going to read today um, in the book of Matthew. So open your Bibles with me, if you will, and the book of Matthew, so that we understand what Jesus himself said of the supper. Praise God. Uh, and this is in the uh, Gospel of Matthew who tells us of uh, what happened on that day um, of the Lord's Supper. Praise God. So Matthew 26, if you will. Um, if you're there, say a big amen. And I'm going to read verses 17 to 30. Um, it is a lot of scripture elsewhere. You can find it in Mark 14, verse 12 to 26. You can find it in the book of Luke 22, verse 7 to 39. You can also find it elsewhere in the book of John. I believe it is in 13, verse 1 to uh, uh, 7, if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct. Praise God. Okay. So you can find the Lord's Supper in each of the Gospels. And they narrate it very uh, with specific details that it may not appear exactly as it appears in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the other Gospels, but it specifically talks about how the Passover was, it's the Passover, it's a Christian Passover. And, I, and let me speak to the Passover before, um, before I, uh, I, I um, go into the scripture. <laughs> the Passover is, um, it is, uh, a feast. It is one of the feasts that was celebrated, continues to be celebrated by uh, the Jews. Now, whether or not we are, you, you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, the truth is Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins, replaced the Jewish Old Testament law Passover that God had uh, ordered all the Jewish people of the uh, holy nation of Israel to celebrate in the Old Testament. And, and this was in commemoration of the, um, uh, the passing over uh, of the spirit of death 
In other words, saving all the children of Israel from the wrath of death which came upon Egypt when Pharaoh, the Egyptian Pharaoh, refused to let the children of Israel go from slavery of bond, bondage of slavery. Praise God. And so after so many uh, miraculous signs and, 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 and things that uh, we continue to read uh, about, for those of you who are familiar with the Ten Commandments, you saw uh, so many of these things, even in uh, in the movies, they were grotesque, and, and, and anybody that had uh, fear in them, the fear of God, would have completely let go of the children of Israel at the very first one. But this man, Pharaoh, the Egyptian Pharaoh, was hard hearted. His heart was hardened. And uh, uh, um, uh, he, he really could not let the children of Israel go until the very last, uh, I think it was about, uh, I forget how many plagues there were. Uh, but the very last uh, plague, uh, which actually it was the death, <laughs> the death of the, of the, of the, of the, um, the firstborn, the firstborn of every, every family in Egypt. And so what God instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel was to, to, to um, slaughter a lamb, an unblemished lamb for each of the families, an unblemished lamb, and put the blood on the doorposts so that when the spirit of death would pass over and the spirit of death was sent by God as a wrath, as a wrath for the disobedience of Pharaoh, uh, it would save every firstborn of the, everyone and every firstborn of the, um, uh, the, the Israelites. But for every firstborn of the Egyptians, they would have to die as a wrath uh, for the disobedience or judgment for the disobedience of uh, the Egyptian Pharaoh um, who, as it were, and eventually had to let uh, the children of Israel go. And even though he had to uh, uh, pursue them after that, but he let them go and, and they were given all the gold and everything. It is a miraculous, uh, a fascinating story in the book of Exodus. If you have a chance, please uh, read about it. But here, uh, the reason that I brought that up is that Jesus Christ replaced that Passover and that that the Jews still celebrated those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and do not uh, recognize him as the Messiah. But as the Messiah for a born again believer, that's why Jesus Christ is called the Lamb of God because he was slain specifically for yours and my redemption. Praise God. Everybody that is listening out there, praise God. Everybody that was in the time of, uh, uh, from the time of Adam, from the time to the time of Jesus, and who will ever be born, Jesus Christ made that sacrifice on the cross. Praise God! And so, so the Passover is is uh, the, the celebration of the Passover for, by the Jews is replaced by Jesus Christ as our Passover. That whoever believes in Him shall not have eternal death, but shall have eternal life. Eternal life. John 3 verse 16 says that, that, that uh, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Perish meaning having that eternal death, but have eternal life. Be saved, in other words. Be born again so that we have eternal life in the life to come, the life after this life. Praise God. And so that is the whole purpose uh, for, for, for our for Jesus Christ and the Passover and what it means for the Passover. So when we celebrate the, 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 the Passover, when we celebrate the, the Lord's Supper, it is in commemoration of that sacrifice that he made on the cross, just as the children of Israel celebrate their Passover and they do eat unleavened bread um, and they, they eat bitter herbs. There's a whole process that, that God specifically told them to, to go through. And then they, cut, they slaughter a lamb and uh, I think it's unblemished, I don't quite remember. But there's a specific process, and that is specifically to remember that passing over uh, from the bondage, to, to be saved from the bondage of slavery to uh, um, bondage of slavery to Pharaoh, praise God. And so we, as born again believers, praise God, in the Passover of the Christians, uh, believers, which is uh, represented by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins, praise God, our celebration is for the deliverance of the bondage of slavery to sin, praise God. So we are delivered from sin by the blood of Jesus. So we overcome 
by the power of the precious blood of a lamb. That is how so significant it is. And so when we eat or partake of the Lord's table, the, 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 the bread and the wine on the Lord's table, it is to commemorate that, but also spiritually to recognize that there is power in the blood of Jesus. That is, there is power in the stripes that Jesus Christ took on the cross. Praise God. That's why it is said in Isaiah 53 verse 5 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes. You get supernatural healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Shandra Basakaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross. Thank you, Lamb of God, that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. So listen to this. And so um, as you uh, as we study this, just understand that um, even as he replaced the, the, the Passover, uh, the Jewish uh, Passover, the feast of the Passover, there were many other feasts. As a matter of fact, God gave the children of Israel seven feasts. And of those seven feasts, there's a feast of uh, the Passover, there's a feast of the unleavened bread, the, and each of these have a special meaning. We actually we already explained the feast of the uh, Passover, which what that stands for. The unleavened bread uh, was um, very, very significant. They were supposed to eat the bread with uh, during the Passover, actually, around the Passover time, together with the Passover for seven days. Uh, and the Passover was about 24 hours. Uh, and then they, they, after the seven days, the fast fruits, uh, fast fruits, they, there was a season called the fast fruits. The season, the, and so they were uh, um, uh, requested by God, ordered by God to, to, to have a feast of the fast fruits. So that's three feasts right there. The other feasts were the feasts of, uh, uh, are still the feasts of the uh, Pentecost or the feast of Shavuot, Shavuot in, uh, in, in, in Hebrew meaning the Feast of Pentecost. For the born-again believer, it is, again, all these things Jesus fulfilled, each and every one of them. Praise God. And if, when we talk about the feasts, we'll uh, get into that. I'm not a, a, a genius myself. I haven't got deeper revelation uh, on the feasts, but I'm still learning. Praise God. But I know that Jesus Christ replaced all the traditional, uh, 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 all the feasts, okay, based on the old um, covenant uh, practice and were transferred into the new covenant. The feasts are eternal. They are eternal, but now under the new covenant. Praise God. And so, so when we celebrate the feast of the Passover, that is Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. And then the feast of the unleavened bread. You've heard that Jesus Christ, that's my daughter shouting in the background. Hi, Allah. Praise God. And so, uh, when we celebrate the feast, of the uh, um, uh, the unleavened bread, recognize that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and was buried, because the bread is baked and, and, and they have to eat it, he had to go through fire. He had to go through the fire. He had to go through the fire in hell. And then he rose from the dead. We know that according to John 6, verse 35, Jesus Christ calls himself the bread of life. We just said it, whoever receives him shall never hunger. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Praise God. And so as uh, uh, um, the bread of life, Jesus Christ also fulfilled the, 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 the feast of the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread was bread that was, was uh, not uh, with, uh, uh, what do you call it? it did not have the, uh, the, the yeast. It was bread without yeast you know yeast for those of you who are bakers yeast uh, is what makes the bread to to make the big dough praise god it makes a big dough but the specific reason why Jesus god did not want them to eat uh, living bread and to eat unleavened bread was because of the yeast which represents the pride of man the pride of man in jesus there was no pride praise god in jesus there is no pride the holy spirit you've heard is humble praise god and god hates the haughtiness of men the pride of men it is pride that brought about the fall of adam and eve praise god and so as a bread of life jesus christ is our unleavened bread we are going to study about that there's a lot of scripture that speaks to that uh, praise god but but i wanted you to understand that jesus christ was a fulfillment of um, not only the fulfillment of this, but a replacement of the old, praise God, the old uh, uh, um, uh, feasts celebrated according to the, in other words, according to the old covenant law, praise God. And so 
And then there's the Feast of the Fast Fruits. And the Fast Fruits, the Feast of the Fast Fruits, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I want to speak to someone who is Jewish, that someone who has any doubt that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He fulfilled all this, praise God. So, so uh, the, the Feast of the Fast Fruits, the Jews, after the seven days uh, of celebrating the unleavened bread, on the seventh day, there was uh, usually, um, they were supposed to, uh, to, to, to have a, a harvest, a harvest, and the first fruits were presented to God. And, and when God accepted them, accepted them, the rest of the first fruits for all the families were accepted. And so we know that Jesus Christ, uh, as our personal Lord and Savior, the word of God declares that he's the first fruit of all the, 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 the born again believers, the first fruit, the first born of all the born again believers. And so he fulfilled that as well. Praise God. How great is that? He fulfilled that the feast of the fast fruits. And we know on the day of Pentecost, before Jesus Christ left this earth, after 40 days from resurrection, which is 40 days, and, and the, the feast of Shavuot is after exactly 50 days, praise God, after the feast of the fast fruits. And so after his resurrection, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, three days after, three days and three nights after, as he had promised in the scriptures, praise God, he stayed here on earth for about 40 days and 40 nights. And, and there was, you know, people saw him, his disciples saw him, and he spoke to them and gave them directions. He specifically told them that on the day of Pentecost, and that will be 10 days exactly after he he um, he um, ascended into heaven. Praise God. 10 days. So he spent, if he spent 40 days on earth, and then 10 days later, he promised the power of God to come upon the children of Israel. That actually happened. Praise God. And so the Feast of Shavuot, for the Old Testament, again, was replaced by the Feast of the Pentecost. The Pentecost being the infilling of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, the Feast of Shavuot is, is when uh, the, 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 uh, they celebrate, the children of Israel celebrate when the Old Testament law was handed down to uh, Moses. Moses, you know, uh, uh, is the one who received the Ten Commandments. And, and, and those Ten Commandments were broken. That covenant was broken. That's why Jesus, why well, God had to send Jesus Christ to die for forgiveness of our sins. So that a new covenant would be made. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. Praise God. And so we begin to understand then that the day of Pentecost, on which the fire of the Holy Spirit of God touched all the disciples and all the men and women that had gathered in the upper room which Jesus Christ had told them to go and gather in, replace the feast of Shavuot. In other words, the, the, the move according to the law of the Holy Spirit, the covenant that is sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit, replaced the feast, or rather replaced the, the, the feast of the Shavuot. Praise God. I want to introduce to you my daughter over here. Oh. This is my daughter, <laughs> and we're going to preach together today. Hi, say hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're going to preach, okay? Are you going to preach? So, so the, 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 the Feast uh, uh, of Shavuot was replaced by the Feast of Pentecost. The Feast of Shavuot, having introduced, the, 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 uh, having been a feast to celebrate the day when the law was handed down to Moses. That's what, what the purpose of the Shavuot was, was supposed to be. Now replaced by the Feast of the Pentecost, in which the Holy Spirit, the tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit, fell upon all that had gathered in the upper room. Praise God. All that had gathered in the upper room. Praise God. Praise the Son of a living God. And that's how so powerful this is. That is how powerful this is. Praise God. So let us read, when we're going to read um, in uh, uh, Matthew 26, okay? Matthew 26, verse 17 uh, to 30. So it says, Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the, the, the disciples uh, came to Jesus, saying to him, Where do you want us to? To prepare for you to eat the Passover. And he said, Go into the city of a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So Jesus Christ is sending his disciples to prepare a place specifically for this. Praise God. Specifically for this. You want to go? Okay, say bye. Okay, all right, bye. All right, go to the room. Yeah. So, so, so the, 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 uh, that's my daughter. I love her. God bless her. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting and for providing her to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so, so it says, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house 
with my disciples. Praise God. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Okay? So the person that betrayed him we know is Judas Iscariot. And that Judas himself in 25 says, who was be, uh, Judas who was betraying him? So he knew. He, he was convicted by the Spirit of God. Okay? Answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? <laughs> you can't tell. He said to him, you have said it. Okay? 26 says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. Okay? Listen to these words that he says in 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Again, this is the new covenant. The blood of the new covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ was to represent the sacrifice on the cross to represent the new covenant. In other words, as a Lamb of God, he would replace all the sacrifices during the Passover feast of the, uh, from the time of the Passover to that, or rather to, 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 to the time that Jesus Christ was, was, was um, going to be crucified. He would replace all those Passover celebrations in which they had to slaughter an animal, to slaughter a lamb in commemoration of that. Praise God. He would fulfill not only that, he would fulfill, praise God, this, the, 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 the move, praise God, into the only way, the truth, and the life. The, 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 the opening of the gate into the only way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. Praise God. Praise the Son of a living God. The new covenant that would be sealed by the precious blood of Jesus. Praise God. So for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So the purpose of this blood was to remit sins. Praise God. This is amazing. This is just amazing. And the enemy does not want us to know this. The enemy continues to fight us. The enemy continues to condemn uh, even born again believers. I'm telling you, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times the enemy has condemned me. I know I'm a born again believer. I was a Catholic. I've shared with you. And I became born again. I know the difference between living according to the law and living according to the spirit. Praise God. You know, even though the enemy many times fights me even to bring this message, he's been fighting me. I don't care. I know the truth. And I, because I came to know the truth, I have been set free. And I want somebody out there to be set free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Praise God. But listen to this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So the blood of Jesus, as we said earlier, cleanses you from all sin, that you are as white as snow, white as wool. Because Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for each and every one of us, is pure and holy and unblemished. Praise God. That's why when Jesus Christ, uh, when God looks at the, the, the blood that, that, that washes away your sins, he looks at his son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Because you are washed in the blood. That's why we as born again believers in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, what God declares, uh, when we come to Christ, we become new creations. All things pass away. We become the righteousness of God through Christ. Because he who died, who who knew no sin, praise God, took on our sin that we may be sinless. Praise God. And it is that blood of Jesus Christ that on the cross, the death on the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us us gives us the, the, the purification, gives us the, the life, give, cleanses us from all sin, from all filth, whether you're a, 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 a killer, whether you've done all kinds of things, promiscuity, homosexuality, lesbianism, fornication, adultery, all that sin is remembered no more when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and say, that's the beauty. But the enemy, what does the enemy do? He condemns. He's called the accuser of the brethren. So don't, if you're a believer, don't let the enemy accuse you of a past sin. That is past. That is past. Praise God. It is past. God remembers it no more. As long as God remembers it no more, you ought to forgive yourself, even as I have forgiven myself. I used to suffer with the 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 the, 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 the guilt of sin, you know, the things that I used to, to to do in the past, and the enemy would torment me and and would try to show me as if I was unclean. I was still unclean. I was not yet born again. He still does that sometimes. But I tell him, go burn in hell. 
You have no power over me. I'm a child of God, created in the image of God, fearfully and wonderfully made. And I want you to believe that, my brother, sister, that it is the purpose for which Jesus Christ died, for the remission of sins. If you are willing to come to the marvelous light, which is Christ, past John 1 verse 7, it says, if you're willing to come to the marvelous light, I will wash you I'll clean. I wash your sins away. Praise God. In 29, it says, But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We shared uh, uh, somewhere uh, before that uh, he, Jesus Christ said, In my Father's house, there are many mansions. So he is preparing a place for each and every one of us. And let me tell you, the, the, the bridegroom, the bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ, he said the, the church is his bride. Praise God. He's preparing the church. If you are... If you are not yet a believer, you ought to believe Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And be pure and holy. Call upon the Holy Spirit to help you overcome sin. I do that on a daily basis. I fight. You have to fight. Sometimes you have to simply say no. Resist. Resist the devil until he flees. Praise God. Because he's coming back. And there will be a wedding, a wedding feast. And that wedding feast is what Jesus Christ is talking about. He says, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you, praise God, in my Father's kingdom. Praise God. That is so awesome. That is so amazing. And that is what we are fighting for. We are fighting for the final wedding. When a father in heaven says, well done, my son, well done, my daughter, you have fought the good fight of faith. Here is your robe of righteousness, the white robe of righteousness. We read about it in the book of Revelation. Here is your crown of glory. You have fought the good fight of faith. You have overcome. Praise God. That is the victory that we have in Christ. And that victory comes through the blood of Jesus. That's why we say in Revelation 7, 11, uh, as believers, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Because that is where the power is. That is where the victory is. That is where the healing, the deliverance is. In Matthew 15, 26, the word of God declares, deliverance is the children's bread. Praise God. So God is interested in uh, each and every one of us being delivered. Praise God. It is our bread. You remember the story of the, the woman that was uh, had a daughter that was possessed with, uh, possessed with, uh, I think we read about it, possessed, if we didn't, uh, maybe uh, it was a different preaching, possessed with demons. And this woman came and cried out. This woman was not a, a Jew. She was, um, uh, I would like to believe, uh, not a Samaritan, but not a believer. Praise God. She was not among the, the, the chosen nation of, of Israel. Praise God. And so this woman desperately comes to Jesus Christ and the disciples try to push away. Uh, and they, they told Jesus, this woman is disturbing us. And, and then uh, uh, Jesus says, first uses a few, a few words that may seem uh, rude <laughs> to, to, to someone else that is observing. But here, this uh, he was testing this woman to find out her faith, whether she really desperately needed to have a deli del deliverance of her child. But again, most of the time, the, the problems that our children have are, uh, are generational causes. So chances are that she also had the, the same infirmity. She had uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, cast that it was going down to the children and so her daughter was possessed by demons and she desperately came to the lord and 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 jesus said these words he said that um it is not good to share the children's food with little dogs okay so now that sounds rude okay but this is what jesus christ was getting at that you have to have faith in order to share on the lord's table that you cannot share a table with demons Praise God. And a table with the Lord. You cannot share a cup with demons and a cup with the Lord. So you must be purified first. You must accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior in order for you to share on the table of the Lord. That was the gist of the story. Praise God. In other words, John 1 verse 12 says that whoever believed in me, he, he believes in, in Jesus Christ, I give the right to become the, uh, he said he gives the right to become children of God in the kingdom of God. In other words, if you believe Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, right there and then, you become a child of God in the kingdom of God. And you can partake of the Lord's table. Praise God. A Hindu, a Buddhist, a Muslim, a religious person, even Catholic, we, yes, they celebrate the Lord's Supper. But I'm telling you, the real purpose of the Lord's Supper is if you are born again. If you're following religion and dogma and man's doctrines, you are not yet born again. I know the difference, and I can tell you so uh, with a straight face. Praise God. 
you have to come to the Lord's table having accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, received the birth, uh, the, 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 the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in you, uh, the, the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and then move in the spiritual realm. Praise God. That's why Jesus said, John 3, 3, you, know, you have to be born of water and spirit in order to be born again. Not just simply, you know, gather in any church and, 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 and just walk according to, to tradition and religion and dogma. Praise God. Praise the Son of Living, and that sounds rude. But this Jesus Christ told this woman that it is not good to share, praise God, to share children's bread with dogs. So he was equating this person as someone who was outside of those that believed. In other words, so so, and, and a lot of people have have um, uh, have uh, interpreted it to, it to mean that Jesus Christ came for just the Jews, but that's not what it is. <laughs> we learn John 3 verse 16 that he, he, God loves the world so much, so he loved Jew and Gentile. The whole purpose of Jesus Christ demonstrating this is that you come to uh, the kingdom of God by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. 11, 11, Hebrews 11 verse 1, praise God. It says uh, um, that, that, uh, it says that, uh, that uh, faith is the substance of hope, the evidence of things unseen. Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you must hear the message of Christ as this woman heard about Christ and came desperately. Lo and behold, this woman said, even the little dogs, yet even the little dogs share the crumbs off of the master's table. Jesus Christ said, it is not good to share the children's bread from the master's table to the little dogs. And she said, even the little dogs share the little crumbs from the master's table so she was so desperate in faith to receive her blessing to receive her deliverance and so that's why we say as born again believers that deliverance is the children's bread and how do you attain that bread you attain the bread which is the bread of life which is jesus christ the son of a living god through faith praise god we walk by faith not by sight praise god in the mighty name of jesus i'm believing that somebody has got the um uh, the message praise god now we're gonna read we're gonna turn away from this a little bit we we know what uh, the the purpose of the, the the sharing of the bread and uh, the wine was um as explained by christ himself it was in remembrance it was in commemoration praise god for the sacrifice that he made on the cross praise god commemoration for the sacrifice that he made on the cross actually here uh, let me see then he took it around and gave thanks and gave it in for this is my blood and new covenant, which is shared for many of the for the remission of sins. Elsewhere, I think in Mark um, Mark fourteen, verse twelve to twenty six. So let's go there, so that you understand. It is he specifically says it is in commemoration, in remembrance. Praise God. In remembrance, that's what it means. Twelve to twenty six. Uh, Jesus celebrates the Passover with his disciples. Now, on the first day of the unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? And he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city. You know the story, okay, of what he says. But listen to 17. Let's jump to 17. Praise God, he says, in the evening he came with the twelve. Now as he sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly I say to you, one of you who eats um, um, with me will betray me. Okay? And he's talking about, again, he's talking about uh, Judas. Praise God. And they began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one another, is it I? And another, is it I? He answered and said to him, is it uh, one of the twelve who dips with me? In, it is one. Jesus said, it is one of the twelve who dips with me in the dish. So sometimes there are people that that uh, uh, are sitting at the Lord's table, but they are betraying Christ. They are not preaching the true gospel. They are lying to the brethren. They are lying to 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 um, uh, to to to, um, uh, to the men and women of God out there. To even those that uh, would have otherwise be believers, but they are not giving them the true message, the true gospel, preaching the truth of the gospel. Praise God. So the Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the, the, the son of man is, is, is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born. He's repeating the same things. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper and says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to him. To them and they they all drank from it and he said to them this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many i should i say to you i will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god 
And when they had sung him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Praise God. Praise the Son of the Living God. God, I think it's not here where it says um, commemoration. I'm looking for, for, for a word that talks about commemoration. But let us, um, let us, um, I think it might be in Luke 22, verse 7 to 39. And that is a long scripture. Let us go to 1 Corinthians. But you know the purpose, the whole purpose of the Lord's Supper was in commemoration. Commemoration. Commemoration meaning to remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross. Praise God. That is my daughter again. Praise God. Today we are preaching with her. Her mom is not here, so I'm with her. And I'm babysitting. But we are preaching together, right? Praise God. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Let us see what First Corinthians chapter 10 says. Uh, verse 14 to 21. Praise God. And this is Paul uh, talking about uh, fleeing from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. It was Paul talking about uh, uh, how you flee from idolatry. He says... And, and there was a lot of things going on in the uh, um, in the church and at Corinth. So many things, uh, practicing idolatry, sexual immorality, all kinds of things that were not uh, of God, abusing one another, even um, within the church members, uh, gossip and, and slandering and and sexual immorality, homosexuality. I believe at the, even at the time, even as it is in these very days, uh, things that were contrary. To the body of Christ. So how we ought to live as the body of Christ. Praise God. So listen to what he says. He says here that uh, therefore, and that's uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? So the cup of blessing that you share on the Lord's table, it is for the communion. Okay. Keep quiet. I'm, I'm preaching, okay? It is for the communion of Christ. Praise God. It is for the purpose of having unity in Christ. Praise God. It is for the purpose of being in, in the same spirit, the spirit of God. Praise God. Not for people start backstabbing each other. Not for people Daddy. killing one another. Not for people hating one another. Not for the rich sitting in the front and the poor in the back as it was even here in America. I understand in America there were, there were churches. Uh, I read about the Methodist Church and how it go to split. Okay, where the whites at a certain time during the time of racism and, and, and segregation had to sit in the front, and and then the the, the 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 blacks in the back sometimes not even allowed to take a seat unless all the white folks have taken uh, their seats, and that is segregation right in the church. And he's talking about these very things here. The purpose of the blood of Christ and, and, and the celebration of the Lord's table is for the communion of all the body of believers. The blood of Christ is supposed to bring people together in one spirit, under one spirit. So he says in verse 16, okay, the bread at which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So 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 the blood or the cup of blessing which which we break, okay, Ella, quiet. Is for the uh, communion of the blood of Christ. And the bread, bread which we break, it is for the communion of the body of Christ. So if you partake of the blood of Jesus Christ and the body of Christ and, 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 and are still backstabbing each other and are still uh, cursing one another and are still hating one another and are still practicing sexual immorality right within the church, then that is not the communion of Christ. Praise God. Essentially, that's what Paul is saying. Listen to what he says. For we, though many... But we, though many, are one bread and one body. For we all partake of that one bread. Praise God. We all partake of that one bread. So partaking of that one bread makes us one body, the body of Christ. That is the purpose of the body, uh, partaking of the, body, of, of the bread and partaking of the wine of one blood, the blood of Jesus Christ under one spirit, the spirit of God. Not denominationalism, because if you come for the sake of joining as a, and gathering together, the gathering of religions, Okay, that is called the gathering of a religion. It's not under one spirit because you still disagree with, you, with your brother. Praise God. That's why I don't believe in interdenominationalism. That's why I don't believe in denominationalism either because Christ never ever died that we should have denominationalism. Praise God. He never died that we should have denominationalism. Praise God. Listen to what it says here. For we though many are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Praise God. We are all believers. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of living God who died for the of our sins, then you become a part of Jesus Christ. Daddy. You become a part of the body of Christ. What is this? What do you have? Okay. Keep it. 
right away. All right. Okay. So he says uh, in 18, observe Israel after the flesh and not those who eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. So if you eat sacrifices offered to idols, okay, sacrifices offered to idols, you are a partaker on the table of demons. And this is what Paul was uh, precisely explaining. Praise God. And 19, he says, what am I saying then? That an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything? Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. So if you are a partaker of the table of the Lord, you cannot share a table with demons. If you are a partaker of the cup of the Lord, you cannot partake of the demons. You cannot practice witchcraft in church and then come, rather outside of church, and then come to church and then claim, oh, I'm a believer. It, that is the equivalent of, 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 of uh, the worship of demons. Okay? So you may come and bring lip service and, and praise God during Sunday, but you're still partaking right in church. Okay, that's right in church because if you're a body of believers and you're practicing witchcraft outside, you're in church, but you're practicing witchcraft. That's what Jesus Christ saw, talked about in the book of Revelation chapter 2 about that woman called Jezebel who brought uh, the practice of sexual immorality and idolatry to the servants of God. Praise God. Listen to what he says in 20. He says, rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. 21, he says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. You cannot share the table of the Lord with the table of demons. You cannot uh, uh, be uh, uh, rich, okay, and then have selfish tendencies, whereas a brother out there is suffering from hunger. And there's churches like that, whereby the rich and the famous and, uh, and those that are moneyed are sitting in the front and the poor are sitting in the back. And sometimes they don't even give a seat because maybe they're stinking, okay? The, the rich are given the, 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 the nice leather, you know, soft chairs, and the others are given the wooden chairs that are that, that, that uh, uh, filthy, praise God. But as a believer or as a church, we ought to actually bring those, look, those are the very ones that uh, Christ died for. Those that you think are stinking, those that you think that are sick, the lepers. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 17, that he died for those specific ones. He did not, the, 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 uh, the physician did not come for those who are not sick. He came for those who are sick. Those who need deliverance, like that woman we just shared about. That woman needed deliverance, and she received her deliverance. Praise God. She received her deliverance because of faith. Okay. Let's keep quiet because that is preaching, okay? All right. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. That is the powerful uh, word of God today. And today, as you can tell, I'm, I'm preaching with my little daughter. She, she's going to make some little noise here and there. But she is loved. Praise God. She is loved. You're loved, Ella? God bless you. Okay? She's a woman of God, created in the image of God, fearfully and wonderfully made. And we cover her in the blood of Jesus. We cover each and every one of us in the blood of Jesus. And if you have children out there, I'm speaking to someone who has a child that may have any kind of sickness and disease. Let her be healed in the name of Jesus. Because God loves the little children. He loves these little ones. Praise God. That's why he wants us to come to the kingdom like little children. He wants us to come like little children. I, you notice I didn't even chase her away. Because, I mean, she's my daughter. Why should I chase her? Why should I be angry at her? She is a child of God, created in the image of God, fearfully and wonderfully man. Praise God. I always cover her in the precious blood of Jesus, like my sons and my other daughter. Praise God. My daughters, I have two other daughters. Praise God. And, and I really love them, and I pray that God protects each and every one of us, our children, our families, mm -hmm. because we are living in a perverse generation. We are living in a generation of uh, uh, um, a generation that uh, has a whole lot of things going on. A whole lot of things going on. Mm. Okay, I'm preaching. Be quiet, okay? Praise God. Say amen. Mm. Amen. Say to the, the, the audience, say Jesus okay. is my Lord and Savior. God bless. Amen. Okay, good job. Okay, so um, that is the, the, the scripture today. There's a whole lot of uh, rich scripture. Um, uh, if you want to read about the, uh, the, the, the uh, let's read First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. And, and how do we know that 
Jesus Christ fulfilled the, un, the, the feast of the unleavened bread, which we talked about. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, praise God, this is what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. This is, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, Paul talking to the church in Corinth again. That let us not keep the feast. And he was talking about the feast of the Passover. Let, us, let me read from verse 6. Okay. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6 says, Your glorifying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lamp? And we understand that leavened bread is, it represents pride. Okay? And it leavens the whole lamp. So if there's pride in one person, it can kill the entire body of Christ. If somebody has gossip, it can, it can kill the entire church. If someone has uh, sexual immorality, it can infest the whole uh, church. And, and that can kill the, 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 the whole lamp of bread, which is the body of Christ, which is Paul was talking about here. So it says in, uh, chapters, in verse 7, verse, uh, Corinthians 5, verse 7, Therefore, patch out the old living, that you may be a new lamp, since you truly are unleavened. So as born-again believers, we are unleavened. Haughtiness, anything that is not of God, God continues to uproot. The Holy Spirit continues to uproot and use us in mighty ways and purifies us. That's why he says he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. Praise God. Because he himself is holy. He is unblemished. Praise God. And we ought to be unblemished. So Paul says, therefore, purge out the old living that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, nor with the living of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And so we know that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And as the only way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ purifies us. And that truth is what sets us free. His truth is what makes us whole. Praise the Son of the living God. That is the message, and that is powerful. But when people... Um, uh, um, come to the Lord's table. A lot of time, they just come traditionally and with the religious tradition and with, with all kinds of uh, uh, practice, which are not really uh, what Jesus Christ was um, uh, demonstrating in the, in, the, in, the, in the Last Supper. So I, I pray that somebody understands what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church and to whoever is listening today. Praise God. We must come to God like children. Even how, don't, I don't care what degrees you have, I don't care what you, you've gone through, whatever PhD, whatever wisdom you think you have. When we come to Christ, and I think I shared on this, uh, on this um, uh, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Bible study teachings, you must come as a child. You must come as a child. I look at my daughter over there, and she's innocent. She just, you know, she'll play and play, and play with her father. She, she has no worry. We are supposed to have no worry, no fear. We are supposed to just come to the Father, bow down, bow down to the Father, ask for the forgiveness of our sins. That's all he's asking. God is saying he does not desire that we perish, but that we come to full repentance. Love God with all our heart. Submit our heart to him. He's the one who's going to, to, to break every demonic bondage, every immorality, every sickness and disease, every impurities, and purify us with his truth so that we are like the unleavened bread. Praise God. The unleavened the bread, praise God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, uh, First Corinthians five eight demonstrates that Jesus Christ fulfilled the feast of the unleavened bread. In Exodus twelve verse seventeen, that is the specific description for the unleavened uh, bread that Jesus gave, uh, God gave to the children of Israel. Praise God. So, I'm not going to read there, but you have uh, a chance. Just read through the scripture. Let us go to First Corinthians chapter eleven. Praise God. And this is Paul explaining, praise God, Paul explaining uh, um, the purpose, the purpose of the, um, of the Lord's Supper, praise God, the bread and the wine, praise God, praise the Son of the living God, praise the Son of the living God, the bread of life, praise God, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17 to 34, what does it say, 17 to 34, it says, um, now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. So Paul was dealing with the church. Again, this is a church at Corinth. There were divisions among the church and they were coming together for the Lord's Supper. Divisions based on uh, rich versus poor. Divisions based on I have, no, no have. Black, 
white the same divisions that we saw in the church and earlier in the church here in America and I don't know whether it's still happening but but um, I hope it's not praise God but it did happen in the past praise God so these were the divisions that was happening happening in here it says I hear there are divisions among you and in part I believe it for there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you and what are the divisions yes we do have divisions right here if you have it from a different denomination and you don't believe in uh, the other denominations uh, doctrine what are those those are divisions that's why i just said i don't believe in interdenominationalism or denominationalism because those are the very divisions that paul is talking about if you are a believer you ought not to have any specific doctrines that are specific to you we should as believers and i'm not talking about the one world church of the antichrist praise god i'm talking about a church that believes in jesus christ as their personal lord and savior and not anybody praise god and that is led by the holy spirit according to romans 8 14 praise god that is the church that uh, paul is talking about here that is the church that god sent his son to die for praise god it is what he was prayed in the prayer in john chapter 17 that we may all be one praise god not one in uh in, in meaning that oh a gathering of religions the hindus and the buddhists i, I, I saw the other day a clip of the pope uh, um bringing together the hindus and the buddhists and everybody was saying my god is a god of peace and then the other one my god is a god of hope and my god is a god of peace so therefore we have we come from the same god no that is a lie that is a lie that is a blunt and lie because jesus christ was very specific in john 14 verse 6 he is the only way the truth and the life praise god and there is no other god no other way not uh, krishna not hinduism not yoga no nothing praise god not even judaism because he replaced judaism with uh, 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 um, being born again in christ praise god being born again in christ and and that is not anti-semitism paul specifically a man of the law a jew himself speaks of this in romans 8 verse 9 to rather uh, romans 9 10 and 11 praise god and explains that that, that his countrymen error when they practice judaism Praise God. The error when they practice Judaism. So you can't say, oh, uh, you can, oh, because you want to bless Israel, then you can believe in whatever they believe in. Yes, we believe in the word of God. Uh, and that's not the Torah. The word of God in the Old Testament. Okay, you can call it the Torah if you want. And that, that the, the, the New Testament, Jesus Christ said he fulfilled the law. He did not come to break the law, but to fulfill it. Fulfill it, not necessarily meaning that the law will stay, but rather that the law now would be written on the tablets of our hearts. This is what Paul said in Romans 8, verse 1 to 2, that when we, there's no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, because we no longer live according to the curse of a law of sin and death, but according to the law of the Spirit. Praise God. That is what Jesus Christ said. Praise God. So it says, 18. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 18. Well, first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it, for there must be also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you therefore when you come together in one place it is not to eat the lord's supper so people when they come together they some of them they were just coming to to uh, to eat something to eat for the sake to celebrate to to fill their 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 their, their bellies okay in other words they left their food at home the purpose of the meal is to to, to share a meal together but you don't come really just to to eat like a, a solid food and eat solid food <laughs> you know what i mean this is what it appears that some people came to to show off their wealth that oh i have i can eat chicken i can afford this i can afford this and whereas there were some that did not have food they're hungry they're poor that could not afford meals and they saw they have, obviously they came with little meals i can imagine from my country some of us eat cassava so you come with your cassava and then another man comes with a big plate of chicken this is what was going on in the church and those are the divisionisms of rich versus poor that were happening in the church listen what it says in in verse 20 it says therefore when you come together in one place it is not to eat the lord's supper for in eating each one takes his own supper ahead of others and one is hungry and another is drunk okay so listen to this so 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 people and, and they, 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 they eat, they come to feed and be filled and, you know, like you are sharing together. So I can imagine people who are rich gathering together and then the poor also are gathering together. But there was no unity. There was rich versus poor. 
the, the poor were going hungry because they didn't have enough to eat. And I believe some of them didn't even have anything to eat. While those that were rich were uh, in the front seats and were having big meals. So that is not the unity. So Paul is saying here that we ought to share so that everybody, okay, has equal, equal, um, uh, equal, uh, an equal share. Equal share. That's the Lord's Supper. And in fact, the early church, uh, during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, they would sell everything that they had and bring it together, okay? Bring it together and share amongst each other, okay? And somebody can call it socialism, you can call it whatever, but that is the church. God does not want you to hold on to your riches and think, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich. That's selfish tendency whereby you don't want to share with the poor. Praise God. That, 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 um, uh, mentality of, of, of greed, that mentality of, of having uh, everything and, and, and I want this, I want that, even those things that you do not necessarily need. You don't need so many cars, you don't need so many houses and so many things, praise God, because those things are going to be left here on earth, praise God, where things perish. But in heaven, those things, uh, rather the, 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 the things in heaven don't perish, praise God. Things on earth, they perish. But the spirit of things don't perish. So when we come to the Lord's Supper, it is to partake of the Lord's Supper in commemoration of the sacrifice that he made on the cross so that we are all, so that as born-again believers, we recognize that God is first. Praise God. To seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added, added unto us. Praise God. So he says in 22, What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? So they were shaming those who have nothing by bringing their big meals and not even sharing with, with those that do not have. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Says in 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, and that the Lord Jesus on the same, uh, same night in which he was betrayed took bread. I think this is where the scripture I was looking at. I thought it was in the Gospels. In commemoration. It says in 24, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you to do this in remembrance of me praise god so we do it in remembrance of christ and in remembrance of christ we remember that christ did not uh, um uh demonstrate the lord's supper as being divisive as being rich versus poor it is in commemoration of the unity of the body of christ of the unity in christ by the same body of christ that was uh, slain for the forgiveness of our sins, and the same blood that was spilled, that we may have no sin, we should be unified. Praise God. 25, he says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, it is rem in remembrance of Christ. Praise God. It goes on to explain so many things that we ought to examine ourselves. We ought to examine our hearts. In other words, so it's a hard thing. It's not about ceremoniously coming to the Lord's table and eating the, the little bread and the wine, whereas you, your heart is filled with hatred for a fellow brother, a fellow sister, right in the church, whereas you're gossiping about your uh, fellow brother, sister in the church. If you are, you're, you're, you're backstabbing your brother, your sister in the church, if some of them even pastors, we ought to conduct ourselves as though we were a part of the body of Christ, and being a part of the body of Christ is if we treat one another in love, that love that comes from God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Son of the living God. And we break every demonic bondage. And yes, we've all seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And God wants us to change from inside out. So talking about sin is not evil. But if you judge a brother, a sister, that is sin. Okay? Because we recognize that as, as sinners, God wants to deal with us from the heart. And so if you see a brother, sister that is going through a situation, whether they are homosexual, they're, sexual, they're practicing sexual immorality, pray for them. Pray for them. Don't point fingers at them. Pray for them. Say, Lord, I pray you deliver them. I pray you deliver uh, Edward Sentong, Pastor Edward Sentong. I may have my own things that I'm going through. I am going through some things. Praise God. So pray for that pastor that they may be delivered. That the prophet of God, that prophet, the, 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 the evangelist, the, the teacher, that the worshiper, praise God, that the lead worshiper, pray for them. Because you know what? If we pray for one another as a body of Christ, then we are going to benefit one another. We are going to be one in Christ. And by that same spirit who gives us all these gifts, we are going to be able to work uh, together and help one another. Who knows? A prophet may give you a word and it will change your, your life. 
that the teacher like me, a pastor, I can preach a message and it will change your life. Praise God. I need a word from somebody, a prophet. I need a, someone to sp say a specific word from God to me that I may be set free. Someone to pray for me. We need to pray for one another. That is what it means to be the body of Christ and to partake, really partake in a real meaning way of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. So the, 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 the bread and the wine that represents the blood and the body of Christ. Praise God. And so these are the things and it is it is really uh, a very, very uh, a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, what uh, the Lord's Supper represents. But I wanted to talk uh, briefly about Jesus Christ as a bread of life. Why is Jesus Christ in John 6 verse 35 called the bread of life? It is it's precisely the bread of life because he is the word of God. It is the word of God that gives us victory. It is the word of God that builds our faith, builds our love purifies us it is the word of god which is also called the sword of the spirit elsewhere in the bible in ephesians uh, uh, 4 verse 12 we just said it is living the word of god is living it is like a double-edged sword that separates soul from spirit bone from marrow thoughts from intents of the earth in fact in deuteronomy 8 verse 3 and elsewhere in luke 4 4 matthew 4 4 jesus christ quoted that man shall not live by bread alone by but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god out of the mouth of the lord praise god what the, does that mean what did it mean it does not mean that uh, we eat this bread of, of the world but the bread that comes from heaven and that is jesus christ the word of god praise god it is our bread because we as born again believers we do not believe uh, live by uh, by uh, this bread of the of the world the bread of, of the world yes god will provide because everything the earth and everything in it belongs to christ but we must listen to the word of god we must feed on the word of god and as god continues to work in us then this other bread the, the earthly bread will come to pass praise god the earthly bread will be provided but a lot of people go to the lord's supper as though they were eating the, the earthly bread <laughs> re, 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 failing to recognize or, or to have the revelation that the bread that Jesus Christ was talking about was the bread of life himself, Jesus Christ. Not the earthly bread, not the things, not the cars, not the houses, not all the, the stuff. Deliverance, as we say, deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance comes through the power of the Spirit of the living God. So really, when you look at it, the bread is the Word of God. The Word of God brings healing to each and every one of us. Psalms 107 verse 20 said that I, I sent my word and, and it healed you. Praise God. His word, Jesus Christ, heals us. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are supernaturally healed. Praise God. Supernaturally healed. Praise God. And I pray that somebody's understood um, um, uh, what the scripture is about um, and, and what Jesus Christ so fought hard to, to demonstrate in the Lord's Supper, explaining that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Children of Israel had to eat food from heaven. And, 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 and he explained to them that if they believed in him, they would receive their daily food on a daily basis without worrying. Praise God. So the bread, the earthly bread you will receive. But first, you must believe that God is. You must believe that he who has called you, he who has promised you, made your promise, will come to fulfill it. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, his word does not return a void. He does not return void. It does that which he sent it to accomplish. It accomplishes that which he sent it to do. Praise God. It is very interesting. And as a matter of fact, when the disciples uh, at one point, uh, and we read there at some point, uh, praise God, um, maybe tomorrow, because I think I'm running out of time. When the disciples of Christ, praise God, uh, were not able to recognize him when he resurrected uh, from the dead, they had to, to be instructed Rather, they had to break the bread. Praise God. Actually, Jesus Christ instructed them to break the bread, which he had taught them to do very often, in order for them to get a revelation of who he was, because they did not recognize him. Praise God. So if you don't read the word of God, you're not going to recognize who you are in Christ. You're not going to recognize Christ himself and who you are in Christ. Praise God. So he is the bread of life. When we break the bread, which is the word of God, then we recognize who Christ is and who we are in Christ. Praise God. The sword of the spirit begins to work inside of our hearts and break everything that is not of God inside of us. Praise God. There's a lot of word, a lot of scripture, the laws of read, uh, reading that I, I wanted us to have today. But I'm going to stop here and we'll, um, um, tomorrow we will share some more um, about uh, this uh, wonderful, wonderful 
wonderful uh, uh, revelation of the, the, the meaning of the Lord's Supper and the bread that Jesus Christ um, asks us to, 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 to share in, in, in the, 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 the wine representing his blood and his body in commemoration of the sacrifice that he made on the cross. May God bless you abundantly. I'm going to close today uh, and I, I, with prayer. Um, I pray that everybody be delivered. I pray that we all be delivered. In these last days, God promises going to power out his spirit. According to Acts 2, 17, our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall prophesy. Men and women shall have uh, men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. Signs from heaven and on earth below. So we must stand even in the times of adversity, even in the times of uh, persecution, and fight the good fight of faith. Praise God. May God bless you abundantly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for the deliverance of that man, the woman that is watching right now. I thank you for breaking every demonic bondage. I thank you for uh, your provision, your protection, your healing power, that you're delivering that, that man, the woman, even as you deliver me, myself, Lord, from every demonic bondage, every spirit of evil, spirit of antichrist, every spirit of confusion, every demonic spirits that are traveling in and out all over the place in the world, trying to break the children of God, trying to stop the, the, the love of God from prevailing in our hearts, trying to, to, to stop us from, from, from partaking of that which you promised, Lord, partaking of the, the promises of God. We recognize, Lord, even according to your word, that we are joined heirs with Christ, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. And then those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, it is not too late. You only need to repent of your sins, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, believe in him and receive him, and you will be saved. He will give you his Holy Spirit, and from this day on, you will be able to walk according to the will of God, empowered by the Spirit of the living God, born again, born again believer, meaning that you must be born of water and spirit, and that spirit is uh, through the Spirit of the living God. For those that are led by the Holy Spirit of the children of God, may God bless you abundantly, and I will talk to you um, we'll share some more tomorrow. Praise God. God bless you.